Coach, thanks. Appreciate you being here. Uh, actually, we're here. I guess you're already here. So appreciate us for being here. <laughs> right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks for coming. Um, I got a couple questions for you. When I was looking at kind of your history, you went from being a GA, obviously, to a position coach, but then back to a GA at Bama. Was that a tough call for you to take a step back, but the program was a step up? Yeah, no, it really wasn't. Um, I knew I had more to learn. Um, certainly financially, it didn't make a lot of sense, but from a professional development standpoint, it was definitely the right move. I was with Coach Prime. We played a softball game the other couple days ago, and he was saying some really wonderful things about you. Now, earlier in the year, whenever that before that game, <laughs> that blew up, yeah. and I did not expect Coach – he was like, where are you going? I said, we're going to see Coach Lane. He goes, you're going to love him. You're going to love him. I guess I didn't know that he, he loved you. I, I, think, I think both of us have a lot of admiration and respect for each other. I think something completely got blown, blown out of proportion. I certainly appreciate him and what he's done for the game. And it's hard not to appreciate what he did as a player. It's unbelievable what he did as a player. Um, and now to see what he's done for the game of football, it's, uh, it's a lot of fun to watch. You're not even 40 yet, correct? Not yet. So you've, you've got to be playing – NCAA college football not not yet you know we had, we just had a walk through uh this morning had some guys on the field and there's a lot of a lot of chatter going on so the guys will come over to the house later tonight and maybe we'll hook it up but I, I doubt I get on the sticks it's been a long time for me <laughs> what was the last stick you got on then whenever COVID happened and we were all kind of locked in our basements I used to tell my wife I'm going downstairs to recruit and I'd hop on, <laughs> I'd hop on Call of Duty and try to play these guys uh -huh. in Call of Duty that was like my last experience and I got smoked, so uh, sometimes I put my son on there, he'd play, and I would be on the headset talking like I was, I was the guy, uh, you know, backing it up. The problem with the headset, though, because I would play a little bit with, like, randos that you just link up with, but it's like 12-year-olds who dominate me <laughs> oh. and then make me feel worse as a human than I already do. Yeah, it's, it's embarrassing when you're uh, getting smoked in that game. So this... Oregon, it's, it's awesome. I mean, it's everything you could want as far yeah. as like facilities, as far as the resources that go into it. Uh, people love you here. You've been killing it as a head coach, but I assume even as good, as good and as great as you do, there's always that pressure because they're providing the resources for you to keep knocking it out of the park. Is that true? Yeah, there's always pressure with any job. And you know, I, I hope there's pressure. It means you're not in the right spot, right? You want to, you don't want to be comfortable. And uh, we all have goals and aspirations. This is certainly a place that you can accomplish them, uh, but it's not supposed to be easy. So uh, it's fun to be in a place where we want to compete. Do you look at the preseason rankings? No, no. you already say no. <laughs> but you Who have cares? to see. But I, I hear you. Who cares? Amen. But a, like one eye, you like blink at it for a second just to see. No, no, it doesn't matter. I mean, the opinions of everyone outside of this room, no offense to the opinions of you guys, it doesn't matter to no, our Ours are great, though. You no, like we have ours. really yeah, good yeah, ones. Good <laughs> opinions? Yeah, well, I'm ones. sure. But I'll, I'll tell you this. I, we don't pay a lot of attention to them because they don't affect the outcome on the field. You know, the, the people on this program, they're going to affect the outcome on the field. So we try to focus on us. 12 teams in the playoff this year. It doesn't really affect you guys because you guys are always in the mix anyway. So uh, your thoughts on the expansion of the playoffs? Because it feels like, to me, Oregon just got to play a couple more games now. I think it's great for college football um, from the standpoint there's going to be a little bit more interest at the end of the season than there has been. Uh, but the end, the goal hasn't changed for us, just win. How much do you say when it comes to what uniforms you're going to wear or <laughs> what uniforms are going to be created? Do you ever see one that doesn't even get to the player's eyes because you're like, that one is not good? Sometimes there's a no, but, but once, once we have the go – that's kind of where I step out, right? So I, I get to see them um, in advance, but our creative team, our design group, uh, they, do, they do an unbelievable job. And then they get a lot of feedback from our players, right? Kenny Farr does a great job working with Nike and, um, you know, those guys that create some, some awesome get-ups for our guys. But a lot of times we get to the game on Saturday and I walk out the tunnel, that's when I see it the first time. No way. Not not the very first time. But like But I'm I'm not that week I'm a lot more worried about the opponent than what we're gonna wear to the game. <laughs> I feel like my number one party would be sense. jerseys. I mean <laughs> jerseys. So, so do you have a, like a, a guy that will say to you, Hey, this looks great, this does it is there a uh, an aesthetics, head of aesthetics here? No, we have an equipment manager. Um <laughs> You know, and he, he's on top of it. He does as good a job as anybody in the nation. In fact, I think he's the best in the nation um, when it comes to piecing this together. It's Kenny Farr. Uh, and, again, he does a great job of meeting with our players, collaborating with them, collaborating with Nike uh, to create some really cool setups for our guys. Coach, the network loves highlighting your excitement and you pumping up the team. I mean, there's always a video montage of somewhere during the game. Do you 
sometimes go home and watch and be like, oh man, like you went too hard. I went way too hard. <laughs> you know, I don't normally watch the TV copy. Um, you know, at, at times we might go back and like peel through it for, um, you know, to, to make sure we don't put any signals on film or things like that. But I, I don't spend a lot of time watching that. And I'm never going to be, uh, I'm never going to apologize for passion. I think the, the players are going to match your energy and enthusiasm. So that's something I always want to carry on the field. You mentioned you're not going to watch signal possibly because signals could be out there but that that's not a really a thing anymore i think it'll still exist in college football just because there's still gonna be some teams that carry tempo um and if you're you know reliant to just giving the call on one to one guy in the field you're probably going to be short you know you want 11 guys playing the same call on, on both sides of the ball so at times i think signals will still exist is are you advocating now that every player has communication in their helmet because that's what i hear you yeah want- i'd be i'd be i'd be great with that um there's probably some guys that too, there, there's such thing as too much information too when you get on the field your best players you just want them to be able to play um, but yeah I think there's probably a benefit to just to where everybody can hear the call and that would that would certainly help things what if everybody also could talk back because I worked at Hobby Lobby for a <laughs> no, while no that <laughs> no would chance. be bad and they gave me a speaker I was on thing all the time and I didn't need to say anything you I ever, just needed to hear you ever been on a walkie talkie where the other guy's always talking and you can't ever yeah that was me at Hobby Lobby yeah. would, they would be like hey go down and set up this display and I was like hey guys if you look at th- three like <laughs> Out three, like she's got, you know, that kind of stuff. Uh So yeah, that probably wouldn't be good. Yeah, would not be a good thing. (laughs) Do you ever feel like you you'll change your offense or defense based on personnel that comes in? If the talent is so strikingly, uh, let's say you know you run wide open, but let's say a guy comes in and is a straight ahead runner and maybe doesn't need it as wide open, will you change your offense at all for that? Absolutely. I I think uh, a coach's job is to match the, you know, the talents of his personnel. And that's, you know, going back to being a high school coach, I think you have to look and see what your players do best and try to make sure you're utilizing their talents. When you were uh, your first GA job, what was the goal for you there? Was it to be a head coach at a major university? Um, Yeah. I mean, that, that was a a goal early on, but you know, er early, Early in my career, I think I figured out just be the best at where I'm at and try to do jobs that nobody else wants to do. When you were defensive coordinator at Georgia, I hated you, man. I hated you. <laughs> well, who's your team? Arkansas. Yeah. Yeah. I hate yeah, oh you. Yeah, you get that. You get that, Coach? And, yeah. And, and, you know, not every OC or DC is known, especially when you're under somebody like a, a Kirby Smart or a Nick Saban, two guys that you've worked with, right? Both yeah. those guys. I hated you because there was, there was no opportunity. It, it was ugly. When you have the players like that, and you're playing, I don't know, let's call, let's just make up a team, Arkansas, and they're pretty weak. Do you know, like this game, all we have to do, if we do exactly what we've set forward, it is going to be over. They are not going to get anything. You know, the great thing about football is you never really feel that way. And I get nervous before every single game. Uh, certainly, we have more talent than, than uh, Arkansas when we played them. But Arkansas. No, no. We're talking Ar- about hypothetical oh, Arkansas. Oh, not Arkansas. Coach. Yeah, Arkansas. Arkansas. Well, how's the talent for Arkansas? Uh, no, no, no. no. It's, it's been better. It's been, it's been better, Coach. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think anytime you go in there knowing that if you don't – if you don't uh, – accomplish your goals and really you know operate on the same page you got an opportunity to lose in college football and that's part of what makes the game so great so uh, we try to prepare for every game the same and and hope that we go play our best and the result hopefully takes care of itself when you walk into a a mom or a dad or a grandma whomever raises the athlete that you're trying to recruit what do they know about you once you're gone that makes them want to come here once I'm gone. Yeah, once you leave the room, once you leave the house. Oh, just that I'm authentic. Like, th- I'm the same guy uh, today that I was, you know, 20 years ago. I hope that's what people can always say about me, that just because positions have changed and situations have changed, that uh, I'm the same person. And that family matters to me. I think if you're in the room with me for 10 minutes, you're probably going to hear about my boys and my wife. And um, that's something that's important to me and, and that we treat the players on our team the same way. Sometimes I'll see, and, so, uh, and I have a little warehouse. We do. I have a little clothing line. It's, we do a lot of charity work with our clothing line, and we have one of those little machines that prints out the shirts. I feel like here there's like a, one of those you know, apparel printing machines. You just get anything you want printed. Is it on campus, or do you have to have it shipped to you? Because it's nonstop. Everything's or- Nike, Oregon, everything. Yeah, it's a good setup. You know, we've got an awesome relationship with Nike. I don't know about – There's I, a warehouse here, though, right? I, I, could, I couldn't answer that. It's secret. I, I know it. this. When I show it to my locker yeah. and I open it up, there's there's God, new stuff in it. And that's, that's awesome. uh, It's pretty awesome. Like I said, Kenny Farr does a great job of taking care of our staff and our players. Um, but, yeah, we don't run out of gear. I didn't used to consider myself a shoe guy, and now – now I got too many shoes. <laughs> Without identifying anyone, were there ever colors that you just didn't like wearing because you didn't like the colors? Not here. 
<laughs> not Oregon. I'm no, talking about I mean, other schools you've been at. Because some, if I had to wear orange, I'm be honest with you, burnt or Tennessee orange, uh, I might quit just for that. Yeah, I guess Any I've colors? just never been that. Fa- I've never been that much of a fashionista. Uh, I'm not a big fan of purple, <laughs> but uh, beyond that. I'm, I'm pretty good with any color, I guess. So light purple probably wouldn't be your jam. Not my jam. Like the UCA Bears, you wouldn't go coach at UCA. I would go. I, I'll coach where there's a job. Yeah. I'm not going to make my decisions based off of uh, color. But luckily for me, I found my last job. You know, who played at UCA was uh, Coach Norville at Florida State. That's right. And you worked with Coach there. What was he like? Yeah, he's awesome. Uh, like relentless. You know, works works his tail off. Um, extremely intelligent. Willing to get in there and and coach, we'll coach every position on the on the field. Um, f- you know, unbelievable family. You know, whenever I work with coach, it's the same time my wife got diagnosed with cancer, and he was really good for me and my family then. I'll run through a couple of them then. Coach Saban, what did you learn from him? Consistency. Um, you know, the guy's a robot. He uh, every morning he's rolling in the office the exact same time. We're gonna have a staff meeting the same time. You know, his his routine was really impressive to see whether it's what he's eating every morning or every lunch. Um, the way he operates day in and day out was was really impressive. Coach Smart. Yeah, just uh, enthusiasm, passion, um, intelligence, ability to adapt. Um, always thought he was on the cutting edge of things and always looking for an edge. I mean, Bones is rolling through all these great coaches that you worked with at all these schools, but he's forgetting Sam Houston State. We're probably the best school in America. Did you go to Sam? I went to Sam Houston State. How about the donut shops in Huntsville? Oh, they're the best. They're the best. And and, and I think Per capita, donut shops per town, I think it's got to be one of the highest. (laughs) (laughs) What was your, I mean, what was that experience like at Sam Houston State? Because a lot uh, of people are going to want to hear about this. Yeah. (laughs) Flip (laughs) this for social. Yeah. So I worked with uh, Casey Keeler was the head coach there, and that that was a great coach to be under. He really gave you an opportunity to, figure out how you want to do things you know he let his coaches coach um he'd push you he'd question you but uh, he gave you an opportunity to go you know make it what you wanted to make it so your db meeting that day your corners meeting that day it was you know how do you want to build it what do you want it to look like the drill work you did on the field uh, and you you make some mistakes but you also learned a lot in the process so uh, i love my time there at sam and it's you know it's it it wasn't the bus league at that time but you take some long road trips um you know you, you do hop on a, a charter bus from time to time uh to get to play Places, and you know that's something that I think everybody should experience in their coaching career. Going to Sam Houston? I, yeah, I, keeping it no, real. I don't think everybody should go to Sam Houston forever. <laughs> that's uh, the start at some of point, their career. That's all I says. Everybody must go to Sam Houston State to coach. At some point, no, I think you know my wife and I have this discussion too. We met at a restaurant. We worked at Outback Steakhouse together. And I think the other thing that everybody should do is some point you should work in the service industry. You should you should get stiffed at some point. You should get an unbelievable tip at some point. You should you know learn how to uh, you know make the people at your table happy and uh, learn how to deal with okay the food came out late or it came out and it's wrong. not even the waiter's fault. But sometimes you have to be but the same. Sometimes it's like it the is. head coach. It like is. it ain't always your fault, but you got to take it and go and take responsibility. Can, can you solve a problem? Right? Yeah. Can you solve a problem? So uh, that that's something else that you know I'm a big believer in that everybody should have to do that at some point. Or an eight top when they wanted a high chair. I waited tables forever. <laughs> so you know what I'm talking <laughs> Dude, about. Dude, and they want chair. crackers. Have you, have you been stiff? I would be stiff to the point of you know they would do zero zero and leave me a tip of like. Uh, how about get a new job? Yeah, like watch the, your the, watch. You know, look both ways when you cross the street. Something like that. Yeah, so that would suck. And then having to clean the crackers up after a baby just went full high chair. Well, that's not the parents' fault, but okay. I mean, the baby does that. Like, what can the parent do? Like, it just happens. It's part of the job. Well, the hard part about a baby is, you know, already coming in that they're not going to order a meal, but you're serving them anyway, uh-huh. right? So you're not going to get uh, a great tip from that. Let me ask you this: Now that you've been a server, are you a good tipper? Oh, I honest. Two things have happened to me. One, I was a server, so I was a good tipper. I've been very fortunate in my career now that I am uh, wildly rich. I'll just say it. It's amazing. <laughs> it's, be- it's great because I grew up very poor. I'm, I'm, I usually tip like a hundred percent, just because. That's awesome. Of those two, thi- of those two reasons, because I relied on my bills to be paid by other people, and I needed that blessing from them in order to just pay my bills. So now that I have money. I'm glad I serve because I understand the plight of what the people are going through serving me. One of the greatest feelings in the world is to be able to give somebody a great tip, right? And know how much you probably change their day and, and make them feel better. So yeah, but don't, don't get it twisted though. He only gets appetizers. <laughs> well, hundred percent appetizers, <laughs> you're like $23 yeah, yeah, bills. Yeah, 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 yeah. Do you have Sonics up here? Uh, I don't know. Portland, the, probably. The, the worst is when yeah. you go to, and I love I'm a Sonic Son- fan. I've been to Sonic my, in a while. my favorite. And you, and I'm just going to flex on tips. It's a great, great point. And I'm honest <laughs> about it. So I love tipping because I needed the tips. So if I go to Sonic and I get like a drink or something and I give them a hundred dollar bill and then when they just look at it and don't, don't like give me the extra smile, I get a little offended coach. I'll be honest with you. I yeah, need I like that's that. Fair. Thanks. Yeah, that's, that's fair. I, I get know. that. 
is I just need you to, because I, I once dropped a whole uh, tray of drinks on a, t- and let me tell you this, this is a bad one. Nope. Give me, I want your worst story. I had a whole tray of drinks. Drinks and probably not really food, maybe a couple. And I walked and I did a little trip. I dropped it all on a guy at the table. And it was probably a se- seven or eight top and spilled it all over him. And I was so embarrassed. I got him a towel. And at the end, when he left a tip, he left me a large tip and said, hey, make sure when someone does this to you, hopefully you treat them the same way. Wow. Changed my life. I wrote about it in my first book. Changed my life because I was like, wow, I screwed up as much as I possibly could have. And this guy still wanted to make that a learning lesson for me in a positive way. So miserable day, wonderful outcome. And I've kept that with me. Did you ever really screw up waiting tables? Uh, I think everybody's spilled a drink on someone before. That's that's certainly bad. I mean, I feel like uh, one of my worst days in, as a server was I had to work Super Bowl Sunday. And the oh, Super Bowl's yeah. going on. And I had like a, a $200 bill and I got stiffed on it on Dude, Super Bowl awesome. Sunday. Um, but that nothing too bad. Nothing you couldn't solve. I feel like I should tip him right now just so he can like... <laughs> Give him money. Yeah, I'm like running I short. <laughs> yeah, I should. Would help. Yeah. No, I'm good. Thanks. Uh, uh, expectations on the program are high. They should be. Expectations are a wonderful thing because you've earned them and deserve them. Um, what are the expectations internally? And what do you tell your team you expect from them day in and day out? Yeah, this is going to be that coach answer that you probably don't want, but they're best. I just want our, our players best. Whatever this team's capable of, that's what I want to see them achieve. Um, and I don't know that we know that until we see what teams we're going to be facing and line up across from them. But we expect when we step on the field to to play the best game we can possibly play, hold ourselves to a higher standard, and, again, let the result take care of itself. I was looking at the schedule, and – Maryland is the team that would be the farthest, but Maryland is here, which is nice. And, you know, with you guys switching conferences, you really don't have to go that far in your first season. That's pretty fortunate, right? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think so. I mean, getting to play in the Big Ten is something that's pretty exciting. We're going to get to go to some to um, some venues that I've never been to before, but we'll travel to Michigan. Um, We'll travel to uh, Indiana, or excuse me, uh, Purdue. you know, and we'll travel. I'm trying to think. Uh, but, but no Rutgers. No, no, no Rutgers. Yeah, no, Maryland. no Maryland. Yeah. Uh, Wisconsin. That'll be a fun road trip for us. So, um, And then everything else is still remotely close to where we would have been before. You're not going to answer this how I'd like for you to answer it, but I'm going to ask it anyway. Uh, you know, your first couple of games, it's uh, – I forget who the first – I know. Yeah, then it's Boise State. Then – so sure, you're getting ready for those, but do you have guys already looking at, at the conference games, scouting those teams? Uh, we all look ahead. So the summer's a great opportunity to kind of jump ahead and look and see what's going to be different that you haven't seen before, what you haven't faced before. So you can kind of make sure when, when we get to fall camp, our hope is that we can kind of put everything in that'll apply to our teams throughout the season. So you absolutely look ahead, try to plan uh, for the future. But then when you get you know, to game prep and game, game week, you're focused on that next team. Do you do, uh, we talked about in-helmet communication, when you guys hold signs up, do you hold pictures of things up? We have in the past. Uh, yeah, I'd like, like to offer one. I'd like to offer a picture go. for us. I knew this was coming. Well, it's just <laughs> – we did a trick play deal with the team last year. It's pretty cool. I would and they like, did it, and they did it. They did it. And I would like to offer a, a, pic, a picture of my head with big glasses. And it's like you want to call the dorky dive. You want to call, like, you know, uh, nerd on three. And it's the one time, one game, that's the sign, my head with glasses. All right, we'll, we'll, we'll look into it. <laughs> oh, he, he gave me the I've look into it. One. My people, my people will call answer. your people. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we'll yeah, yeah. There's only one other place that has a picture in my head in Arkansas, the basketball games. I hold it up, you know, they do that thing. But that isn't, not really for a play. So I'm offering that. I will not sue you. No intellectual property. <laughs> We're able to use that. Uh, We're free rent. One game, even if it's a fake, even if it's, you know, the indicator for the next sign. Okay. You are able to use my head for a sign. So we get to use it once. If we use it more than if once. If you use it once... What's your favorite? What what charity are you involved in here? Uh, OHSU. It's a uh, you know local uh, cancer research uh, hospital. If it shows up, ten thousand dollars from now my pocket. Talking. Then consider it done. To now that. we're talking. If it shows up and we see now it, now there's like, incentive. Yeah, t- I will donate ten thousand dollars to that charity, and I think we both win. Yeah, I think that's a win. Now every time. $10, no, no, yes, no, yes, no, yes, no, 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 no,
take pride in how you marinate a steak or do you just grill it up? Uh, no, I, yeah, more, more grill it up, put the right seasoning on it. It doesn't take a lot working in a steakhouse, salt and pepper and, and, uh, <laughs> you know, you're pretty good. So See, some other, put some other stuff a little on butter it. on there. Yeah. We did garlic butter yeah, last night, some yeah. garlic butter and, uh, yeah, it's more about making sure it's cooked right. What's your go-to though. When people come to the house, you're like, Oh, uh, let me, let me, this is my best meal that I can cook someone. Yeah. I can do steak. I'm, I mean, that's, that's kind of my steak potatoes. I like doing the, uh, you know, wrapping the potatoes in aluminum foil, throwing some onions and stuff inside, cooking it for a long time. You do it in the grill or the oven? Yeah, both. I'll do both. The, usually I'll do the potatoes in the oven, um, but I've done both. I also like jalapeno wrap, you know, like stuffed uh, jalapenos with bacon wrapped around it. That's hard to beat. And listen now, he says jalapenos, man. You hear that? I know. I always feel like I'm... Ex- you say jalapeno? How do you say <laughs> Well, <laughs> I'm from Arkansas, but I'm, I, I also feel like I'm extremely too Caucasian to accent that if I don't accent the rest. Because I have friends that are like, hello, my name is Jimmy. Would you like a tortilla? And I'm like, that doesn't work. <laughs> it's hard. Yeah. Like I get, or when they're talking about the countries for the soccer yeah, and they're yeah. like, hey, would you like to watch soccer? It's going to be America versus Uruguay. And I'm like, that doesn't feel legitimate. I like it. But to sure. me, I can't do that. Maybe it's maybe it's because my wife's Cambodian. And I, oh, I'm for sure. Then you have yeah. full, yeah. you know. Absolutely. Okay. Well, five questions left, coach. Uh, let's go to this. Give me your musical Mount Rushmore, the four artists that you love all time that you'd put up there? This is tough. Uh, I, I like Mumford and Sons a lot. Um, probably throw the Cranberries on there. I know that's kind of a wild High one. School. Out of nowhere. Yeah. yeah. I like I like the Cranberries. Now, I don't know if they have enough bangers, but... Uh, but they got like three all-time yeah, bangers. All-time, all-time, yeah. all-time. Yeah. Classics. Zombie. 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 That's exactly. Yeah, that's yeah. great. Uh, Fleetwood Mac would probably be in there. Um and they're kind of that same category. They don't have a million, but they got some really good ones. You didn't want to do a Fleetwood Mac song? I can, sure. Uh, you can go, go your, your own way. way. <laughs> and then, I don't know, I'd probably go something new. I, you know, I went to a Zach Bryan concert recently, and he was unbelievable, so I'd probably throw him on there. Is it weird having bosses uh, older than you? No, no I, don't, I think that's normal, right? Or, yeah, yeah, bosses are usually older than you. Okay, how about except this? Except you. Is, but you're bossing people. Okay, how about this? You're bossing people around go. that are older than you. Yeah, not really. I don't. I think if you came and watched our program, you'd see we work really well together. It's not about just bossing. Sometimes you got to make the tough decisions. Yeah, but, yeah, uh, yeah. I don't. I don't. Yeah. I don't feel like we're bossing a bunch of people around here. That's what I'd say too. But that'd be awesome. <laughs> I guess I kind of was that though. For I was like twenty three. Well, yeah, running something, but not like this. And you're kind of my boss too, and I'm older than you. So yeah, go. Weird. coach. We're like we're dying breed, like youngsters <laughs> that run everything. Yeah. <laughs> Sure, they don't even More know. aging quick. Yeah, these kids don't even know. Nah, I don't know anything. Three Coach, questions left. I have four boys. Um, one of them says he's going to be uh, a receivers coach for the Dallas Cowboys, and that is his peak. Like, that's what he wants to do. Yeah. What would you tell, like, a kid? Like, if you want to be a coach, this is where you start. Yeah, start coaching. <laughs> as fast as you can, start coaching. It's it's more about getting your feet wet. You don't want to be bad at your first job, right? So uh, you got to go somewhere where you can get the opportunity to do it. And it doesn't really matter where you're at. It's about getting out there and learning. You know, my first uh, coaching job was uh, Park Hill South High School. I was an elementary PE teacher, and then I coached high school football, and I started coaching receiver. I played defense my whole career. I was coaching wideouts first. So um, I think it's first about just getting in there and getting your feet wet. And then don't worry about the next step until you've done a great job at the step you're at. That's uh, you yeah. bring up something interesting. You had never played wide receiver, but you coached it. I have te- friends that are teachers, and like they're like, I don't know anything <laughs> about World War II. So they cram like before they have to give their lesson. When you switch to coach wide receivers, are you just learning as much as you can before you go and take that job? Yeah, you spend all your time studying. We did a lot of blocking drills at Park Hill South. I always told our, <laughs> I always told our wideouts that catching the ball was a privilege. We'll do that before and after practice, but during practice, we're going to be really good at blocking. So I'm sure they didn't love that. That's good. Let's do. Mount Rushmore favorite athletes growing up. When you were a kid, who were your favorite four? Yeah, Derek Thomas for sure would would have been uh, number Chiefs? one. Kansas Chiefs, yeah. Chiefs. Um, Michael Jordan for sure. Probably Nolan Ryan. Mm. Um, yeah, I, I grew up in a really cool era with the Chiefs, so like Neil Smith would probably be on that list as well. Um, so I was a big Chiefs fan. Bo Jack, actually, I'd, I'd oh, say Bo man. Jackson. Got to go Bo. He we played just, for the Royals. We just cut a new head into the, the Mount Rushmore. That's five. Yeah, yeah that's well, okay. That's yeah. all right. If you have to remove Neil and throw Bo in there, I like them both. But Bo, <laughs> sorry, Bo. Neil, you've been eliminated. <laughs> yeah. Yes. But the baseball bat swing after a sack was the coolest thing ever. Did you Did you have one of those as a linebacker? No, no. I just ran back to the huddle. 
Man, what would you do I now? Had a sack, though? but yeah. What, what would you do now if you could have like a yeah, run back to the huddle? Yeah, yeah. Same thing. Is that what you tell your guys to just run back to the no, huddle? No, I mean you have to be you. Um, I always tell them this: you you don't want to get a penalty for celebrating on our team. That's that's going to equal a lot of running the next day. So uh, we don't do that. We don't we don't punish ourselves. My final question has to do with the rule change that I think that uh, college football should make, and I would like to hear your opinion on it. Mm. Um, so he <sighs> scored touchdown. It's time to kick the extra point. I believe the person that scored the touchdown should have the opportunity to kick the extra point, and if made, it's worth two points. Yeah, it's an interesting thought. Um, I'd have to put some thought into it. Yeah, I, exactly. I, Stumped him. It's going to make you think more about who you want to score your touchdown. <laughs> You're right. Right? Right. Like, you know, you get down to the two yard but line. But you don't have you, to. Your kicker can kick for one. But for an extra point, for, I, for one more point, I, I think you're going to be trying to force the ball to a guy that's got a decent foot. <laughs> and what about any kick over 50 being worth four points? Yeah, I'm down for that. That's, yeah, yeah. These are all good rules. Yeah. You see when we get to the front. And the real one would be sensors and balls. So you would know if the ball actually oh. crossed the plane because if the cameras can't see, but if the knee is down, oh, Please. but the sensors, that's, that's probably coming, right? I yeah. think you're, you're ahead of your time there, but I think that's, that's something that'll exist here sooner than later. Coach, we really appreciate the time. Uh, what you've done here is amazing. Final bonus question. When you're the defensive it's coordinator, it's yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. You added an extra Mount Rushmore. Rushmore yep. Yeah. That's when I All felt right. like we were open All to another right. question. You <laughs> cheated. <laughs> we cheat. Um, I, have Whenever you're a DC at Georgia and you guys are killing it, obviously, how quick does it all happen that you're the head coach here? Is it, is it a call and the, well, we're off? Yeah, it's fast. It's fast. We were in the process of um, recruiting at the time, so I was actually in Miami when the when the process kind of got started, and then on the flight back, um, you know, from Miami, uh, it it kind of even went faster. A long night, and could you believe it? No, I, I still pinch myself that I get to do what I get to do. Um, I was really content, really happy where I was at, and. Uh, enjoying it, but I never thought this would be as fulfilling as it's been. We really appreciate the time. I'll be watching it from my head. Do it in like one of the games that don't matter too. Like it doesn't matter, you know, as long as it's national TV and national championship game. Why would you offer that? What? You want the big you said, game. You dude. said, yeah, it doesn't matter as long as it's national, national TV. TV and national okay. championship. Okay. All right. Okay. Or maybe okay. college football playoff or Ohio State. <laughs> okay. It doesn't matter as long as it's one of those games. But <laughs> Maybe we can do like regular season 10,000 and then if we do oh one boy. in the playoff, I'm, that would be enough. Kids, 10. this is called a negotiation. Now that I would do and especially if everybody that you had t-shirt night where everybody had my head on it. Oh my goodness. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. That, that probably cost a little dough. Yeah. It probably cost a little bit. Yeah. I agree <laughs> yeah. with that. Coach. Um, amazing. What you've done here. Thank you for the time. We really thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Thank you. A lot awesome. of fun. Appreciate it.